but for, for ladies, I really want to go back to the place where God really designed us to be helpers and help meets. And I know that that's such a hard word, especially in today's day and age where, um, you know, there's a, there's a literal movement to have, um, I, I want to make sure we know this, men and women are equal in value, but different in role. It's you good. know, like God designed us, we're equal in value, but different in role. There's tons of cultures that don't see it that way, especially over in the Middle East and back in the day where women took an inferior <clears throat> place in culture and societies. And I think it's really important that as Christians, we don't see it that way. Great. We understand that, no, God made us equal in value, different in role. He set it up that way. Our pastor used to always say, anything with two heads is a freak. Right, like the reality is, is if we have more than one leader, we're pulling each other apart and we're going in to opposite directions oftentimes. So it's like we're learning to submit under the authority that God gave us, man as the head of the household and women coming in that place of understanding the support role is super important. And we all often are tempted to neglect that when we look around society right now and we see what's going on. You know, like every everybody wants to have this power tripping, gonna... Yeah. I don't know, make it to the top of the corporate ladder, which is not bad, first of all, so don't, don't hear me saying that, but sometimes I'm tempted in ministry. This is what God nailed me with this morning. In ministry, you take your role of ministering to the masses first before your first ministry. Like you do this before what I called you to. I called you to be a helper first. And that was like, okay, I've been a believer for 24 years. I learned that 26 years ago, 25, 24, 23. I learned it a bunch of years ago. And from then on, have taught several studies on it. But what do you think my biggest temptation is as a woman? To move away from that, right? The very first call that God gave me, I wanna run from. Obviously being his daughter first. And so there's that temptation to go, yeah, I wanna help everybody else, but not him, why? Oftentimes because we've been hurt by one another, right? Like we've been hurt by, or I'm not, there, there's this desire to do this reciprocation thing. Like, oh, if you do this, then I'll do that, right? But that's not what God called us to. He called us to be helpers because that's our role. That's how he's designed it. And <clears throat> when we live in that role, something spectacular happens. Things go well in the home. So these are, I wanna just read two verses Good. from Genesis 2, just so that those of you put it on the screen, it's two verses, 18 and 20, it says this. Then the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a? Helper. Who is what? Just, just right. right for him. That's another thing I wanna address. Sometimes we'll look on and be like, well, she does that for her husband and he does that for her, it doesn't matter. You're hardwired with a very unique DNA built to help the one you're married to. Well, and as God sees what that marriage needs, he'll, if you're going vertical, our logo, if you're going vertical, literally asking the Lord for wisdom, for understanding, he'll then pour out through you understanding of how to meet his specific need and your spouse's specific need, not anybody else's, you and you alone for that particular marriage. And so sometimes we look on at other people and we think, why do you think God built it that way, first of all? Because I always have to do what? Keeps you dependent on him. If I'm not going vertical, I'm not ever gonna know what to do. I'm gonna assume from times past what he enjoyed or what other people are doing. And then if I'm not vertical, it's not filled with the spirit and then it's not really fun, right? So there's this, con God knows what he's up to. He's, he's so smart. He's like, oh, if I want them to be connected to me always, let's make every relationship better if they connect to me first. Wow. Isn't he so cool? That's really good. He's like, okay, I'll give you some help. Then you'll taste and see when you're connected to me, you can do these things so much greater. Verse 20 says this, he gave, oh, he gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky and all the wild animals, but still there was no helper just right for him. 21, so God, the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs, closed up the opening. The Lord God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. I thought that was really sweet, like just a reminder of how men, how precious God is in understanding that you have needs that need to be met. And oftentimes they're gonna come when, when you're married, he's gonna give you, mm. bring to you wow. your spouse and give understanding as she connects with the Lord how to meet those needs. I thought that was really sweet that he said that there. Mm. 
And then his response was, at last, the man exclaimed, this one, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she will be called woman because she was taken from man. And this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united as one. And so my challenge this morning when I woke up was, do you, do you wanna be a helper? That was my role for you originally. And I was just like, ah, thank you, Lord, for the reminder. Okay, let's highlight a couple things that are sticking out to you. So H, the acronym, humble, and he also told me hustle. And I was like, hustle? Like, aren't we okay. supposed to rest in your presence? Like, but it was interesting. Humble, the first verse, First Peter 3, 8 says, finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with one another, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tenderhearted, and keep a humble attitude. And the very first thing he said to me is, know it all pride. Any women in here? <laughs> no, there's two, I think, yeah. Only two prideful ladies. Three? Okay. Gotta get four, no. So I will pray that we will become humble. <laughs> but think, think of that, like the reality is like he hit me with know-it-all pride. You don't always have to be right. You don't always have to tell him. You don't always have to have the, the last word. And so God was just stirring me a little bit. Be humble, walk with him. Always be humble and gentle, Ephesians 4, 2. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. <sighs> Do you love your, your spouse's idiosyncrasies? <laughs> you love mine. I do. Yeah. I love them. <laughs> you know what her number one pet peeve is? I'm loud. So literally, I'll be talking. She'll be like, shh. I'm like, don't tell me to shh. I'll just go louder. <laughs> And the, the best part is, like, you can tell, like, you'll we'll be in a staff meeting, there's 20 people in the room, and he'll, I'll be like, oh my gosh, like, you're screaming at the person, and I'm like, oh gosh, it's a girl, she's going to take up a fence, and I'm like, oh babe, and he's like, are you telling me to be quiet? <laughs> That's so true. In front of everybody, I was yeah. trying to, like, be on she the She's just trying to DL. be the helper, right? And I'm just losing so my mind. So then he corrects and he says, hon, don't tell me that in the middle of a meeting, and I was like, oh. Okay, but I've told you a hundred times after the meeting. (laughs) And I still don't get it. But that's because you love my idiosyncrasies. It's okay. He's a very passionate person and I need to, and so God said, appreciate the differences, right? Like learn to appreciate the differences. Super passionate. Sometimes it comes out really loud. All right, the other part, hustle, Proverbs 31. You guys, we don't have time to break down Proverbs 31. We can spend an entire- Give it a homework assignment. I am giving it. Oh, my bad. (laughs) You can go into Proverbs 31 and literally two get strong leaders verse talking over for each other. verse for verse for verse. Ladies, this is a place you can spend a year and still be convicted as all get up. Like, so I'm just going to hit a couple. Proverbs 31, 15. She gets up before dawn, this is hustling, to prepare breakfast for her household and pl- plans the day's work for her servant girls. This is what God reminded me of. Well, before you were married... You used to drive 15 minutes to his house and make breakfast at 4 a.m. before he would go work out. And I was like. (laughs) Now who makes the eggs and bacon? Oh. He makes breakfast a lot now. Okay. So we're moving on. I'm going to work on that one. I was convicted. 3117, she's energetic and strong and a hard worker. 3120, she extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. I want to think there, that's both humble and hustle, right? Like you're wow. extending your hand to someone who's in need and you're seeing, you have the humility to listen to God and go, that person has a need, let's meet them where they're at. That's beautiful, and not, not just in the sight of God, but also in the sight of your spouse. It's attractive. It's I'm about, I, I think sometimes like, I, I'm not gonna tell you what I think, forget it. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to E, humble and hustle, H, E, encourage and edify. Is it really easy to encourage someone? All you do is open your mouth and tell them what you see. If you have the mind of Christ, God loves your spouse. He cannot wait to encourage your spouse. So this is something men and women can do, but you can, you can listen in on what God has to say about his kid, right? And then just agree with what God says. How easy is that? Sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes I'd rather just say, 
Um, well, that's not exactly what we should be doing right now. Maybe instead of listening into what God would say, I'm giving him my mind instead of his mind, right? So instead of giving him my opinion, ask the Lord, how would you have me encourage him today? So he mentioned earlier, you guys heard it, words of affirmation is what he needed. So God was hitting me with that today. So I'm gonna work on that one too. He took me to the woodshed this morning. So he... <laughs> Sometimes what I think and I'm about to say, I really believe it's good and it's helpful and it's encouraging. And then like you heard a couple minutes ago, it's not from his opinion, always the most encouraging. So learning to filter, like can my words be father filtered? If I go vertically first, my words are gonna be ones that match his. If I'm agreeing with him, he'll be blessed. Make sense? Yeah, that's good. Edify, a wise woman does what? Builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands, edifying. That one, that one is so difficult because it's kind of, um, there's so many different variables to that, right? Like, how can I build my home? And there's a million different ways in the actual home, taking care of the kids, taking care of a meal, taking care of the home. But then there's building in ways, spiritually speaking. I'm gonna be, and we're gonna get hit it in just a second, a prayer warrior. I'm gonna ask and serve, give the helping hand. So as we're building our com- in our community, as we're inviting people in to pray for our kiddos, as we're teaching kids lessons from generation and generation to come, you're building up your home, which ultimately is building up the leader of your household. Great. Make sense? That's great. Proverbs 31 says, um, when she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. Before words leave your, your lips, just ask, if you are on the receiving end, would you think that was kind? Hmm. Right? Is that word encouraging? Is it edifying? Is it kind? Um, I, I, there's a... Ephesians 5, 4, there's so many great verses of this. This one hit me hard. It says this, though some tongues just love the taste of gossip, those who follow Jesus have better usage for language than that. So it says, don't talk dirty or silly. It says, that, to- that kind of talk doesn't fit our lifestyle. Guess what our lifestyle is, y'all? Thanksgiving is our dialect. So instead of complaining, God just hit me this morning. Don't, crit- like, my go-to might be critique, you're a good consultant, though. but you but really are. instead of critiquing, like can we complete, Com- like complete instead of critique? God just hit me, like can oh. you be co- the completion of Him? Two becoming one. Are you willing to like let the co- the critique go to the Lord? Like here's my complaint. Psalms tell us, pour your heart out to the Lord, pour your complaint before the Lord, and then as it's Father filtered, what comes out is a blessing. That's and good. that giving thanks is our dialect, our dialect now. I'm thankful for. If you come into a room thankful instead of complaining, what happens in that room? Yeah, it's it changes. shifts. Yeah. It goes from tense to joyful. If you come in singing a psalm like the psalms tell us, everybody else is gonna join in and have a dance party. Are you kidding me, right? Like we'll literally dance in the living room. Our kids are like, oh geez. You know, and they're inside their heart laughing and loving it even though they're playing the game that they hate it. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. So We're called to encourage, we're called to edify. Ladies, how do you feel about that? Speak life, give thanks, right? That's good. Last, but not least, well, no, there's two, help, L. Learn and love. This is a fun one, because he talked about the five love languages, and he said that his love languages shifts all the time. Anybody else in here shift? Like, I need acts of service today, but you know, six months from now, it might be quality time. Because here we are, emotional creatures. We're all over the place with different things. And God just hit me, (laughs) learn. This L means learn where he's at. Are you willing to study him? Are you willing to see and take a temperature? Like, okay, God, give me your perspective on what's going on. Learn where he's at. Proverbs 31, 10 through 12. It says, who can find a virtuous and capable wife? More pre- she's more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. If I'm pressing in, and asking the Lord, give me wisdom on how to learn and love, he's gonna bring it. And then verse 12 says, she brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. Sometimes I come running into the room with a, like all these things need to be done and we gotta, and he's like in the middle of making the biggest decision of his whole life with the church. Should we build a building for $13 million? I don't know. And I'm like, all the kids, you know, like this is what's happening. And I need a decision on this. And so it's like the Lord said, 
be okay to step back, observe the circumstance, take a look, and then see if they approach as, should it look like this? When should I approach? How should I approach? What should the approach look like? Be willing to go there. Learn where he's at and love him right where he's at. Titus 2 says, Verse four, it says, older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children. And I looked at that word love and it said, be affectionately a fond, fond of and adore. How many of you guys like to be adored? Mm-hmm. How many of you ladies love to adore your man? Uh-huh. Depends on the day. Uh-huh. So once again, God gives us a command to go to him first so that adoration can come out for both God and man. And so... That's a fun one. I thought, okay, adore, here we go. Last but not least, pray and play. Boys, are you ready? Pray and play. So this is something that I think is so sweet. God tells us in the Psalms that to, I think it's in Psalm 119, talking about praying all day long. So I set up this thing like pray seven times a day. And then I'm like, oh, that was challenging play. Like I don't ever intend all day long to like encourage banter back and forth in a way that's engaging to him, you know? And it was really (laughs) convicting to me. Pray, part of it is when we take up an offense, when we are offensive to our spouse or to our loved one, confess your sins, James 5.16 says, to who? To the Lord. What does James 5.16 say? And each other. Yeah, to each other. How quick are we, this is the conviction he gave me today, how quick am I to go to God but not to come to my husband? Will you please forgive me? Not I'm sorry and walk away. I'm sorry is a cop out, y'all. The (laughs) I'm sorry thing is just like I'm too lazy to actually own it. That's what I do when I'm being lazy. I'm like, I'm sorry, and I walk away with the attitude. Body language sometimes speaks way louder than those words, right? (laughs) And so God got me and he is like, no, like confess to him, babe, please forgive me for whatever the issue is. It may have seemed disrespectful when I said this in front of so-and-so because, please forgive me, do you forgive me? Like he was bringing that back to light. Like, don't just be quick and say you're sorry. Own when you're offensive. And I was like, okay. And then be quick to listen, um, you know, when he's coming to you. So that's what he got me with. Okay, boys, this is what you're waiting for. The play part. I know you're waiting. You ready? Yes. <laughs> you guys know I'm giving you a heads up. It's Valentine's Day tomorrow, so get your, get your creative thinking cap on. Boys, be creative. I girls, zero game in girls that. let's respond. Whatever it is, let's respond well. But I, I, I was thinking about the play part, and he reminded me that we're creatures that are built emotionally, spiritually, physically. We have needs met in all three of those categories. And I wanted to say emotionally reminds me of face-to-face today. Next month, it might feel different to me, but emotionally, face-to-face. How do I connect with my husband? When my eyes are meeting his, and we're downloading about stuff, I'm hearing his heart, he's hearing my heart, and we're truly, genuinely having communication where there's mutual understanding. Not you hear me and then I totally don't understand at all where you're coming from and I just assume I do and walk away. No, mutual understanding is clear communication, right? No, oh, is this what you mean? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Not like, well, I got you and leave. Do you know how often I've been doing that to you lately? Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> He's winning still, guys. He's winning. Last two, spiritually. The shoulder to shoulder time, y'all. There's a football game tonight. What's the shoulder to shoulder gonna look like tonight? Sitting on the couch and telling your guy, oh, yeah, yeah, I like that play too. I'll literally be like, okay, it's third and six. This is big. What do you think, babe? And I'll be like, oh, see, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Gets a consultant real yeah. quick in there. And this the the shoulder to shoulder thing, it really reminded me of walking with the Holy Spirit. God the Father gave us God the Son to pay for our sins so that we can have forgiveness with each other, but he also gave us Holy Spirit. So now we can be empowered by God the Holy Spirit to do life his way. And shoulder to shoulder reminded me like, oh, doing life together, sure, watching a game, doing ministry together, that's awesome. But really operating and appropriating in the power of the Holy Spirit because he's here with us, Paracletes. That's what his word declares. So Great. understanding shoulder to shoulder is really fun. Yeah, games and stuff, but it's also listening in and hearing what the Lord would say. And then physically, boys, are you ready? Yes. The belly, the be- the belly button to belly button time. You can, whatever. But also, boys, I want to tell you, the hand to shoulder time 
That's good too. It doesn't always have to be belly button to belly button. You hear me? It could be both. Just saying, I got you girls. You got options. It's good. But have, I like options. have fun. Have fun. This text, we, got, we read this on Friday night, but I'm gonna finish with this. It's 1 Corinthians 7, 5. Do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless both you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you can give yourselves more completely to prayer. And afterward, you should come together again so, so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of self-control. This verse, I think, is so encouraging because I think it could go both ways, right? We all have our reason why not, or we all have our reason why. And so I wanna just encourage, if you're pursuing each other emotionally, if you're pursuing each other spiritually, this part is like, it's like, comes naturally. Mm. It's just part of the, the program. And the coolest thing is it's the marriage relationship reflects the triune Godhead more than any other relationship on the planet Earth, especially in the marriage bed. So be encouraged. God designed it to be in the fireplace, in your home, male, female, husband, wife. He loves when we enjoy a sexual relationship together, y'all. Yeah. So pray about it. Ask the Lord, what, is that, what does that mean for us today? And be, be okay with the awkward conversations, getting back to oneness and unity. And I think, I think he nailed me th- this morning. I don't know, girls, how do you feel? Yeah, you feel it's like good, encouraged? Good challenge. I feel like I feel like I have a lot to work on and I feel like God's just what he what happens when I'm convicted is I get like shame I feel shame or embarrassed like I don't know God I'm such a horrible human and what I want to share with y'all is uh-uh this is how we should respond. Wow God, you love me so much that you're not going to let me stay the same. You're showing me things that I can work on to become more like you. And so being able to be in that place. You want to-